Here's on the Hot Homestead, and I am Jeff. Today, I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about wiring up a switch and an outlet, both 120 volts, but the exact same outlets for 12 volts. Some people said you can't do it. I can do it. So can you. So first, we're going to talk about AC, 120 volts, and how we're going to wire these up. This outlet is considered a 15 amp outlet rated at 100 and it says 125 volts on it but 125, 110, 115, 120 they're all the same so but it's more important it's a 15 amp outlet the switch is also a 15 amp switch also rated at 120 now you might see some fine print on here you can't see it but it says AC only well that's just some legal jargon that says they have to be used for AC for housing you know codes and permits and all that good stuff so anyhow but for DIY folks and for solar applications and for you just horsing around you can wire both of these up in 120 or not and but or 12 volts so first we're going to look at this for 120 volts so now on your gauge of wire your gauge of wire goes like this 14 gauge wire is 15 amps it will fit perfectly right in these saw in these holes here or you can wrap it around here now these are here also for the reason that if you have 12 gauge which is a 20 amp you can use that on this and it will fit right in here it won't fit in there however though if you use 10 gauge which is a 30 amp it won't fit in there so here I've got 12 gauge which is a 20 amp and that 12 gauge will actually fit right in there perfectly if I were to try to do that with this 30 gauge it's a thicker wire I don't know how well that's coming out, but you can tell it's a thicker wire. So, that's not going to fit unless you try to carve out the plastic here and, and go that route. And I guess you can, I've done it before, but um, there's no need for it if you're using the right size wire. So you can use 12 or 14 gauge. Now, you have black ones here and you've got these chrome looking ones here the key to go by is on the back it, right here and, and I doubt that you can see it but it says hot that's the hot wire goes on this side here so the hot's going to match the black now in AC this is your hot your white is called your neutral and your bare is called your ground so your black one your hot one is going to connect up with your black. So they're kind of color coded, almost dummy proof, if you will. And then that leaves that one with this other side. Now, I don't know how well it's going to come out, but there, this piece here is tied to this piece. So you don't need to have to use all four of these screws. So if this is on the end of a series of sockets, that's okay. You'll just have one on one side, one on the other side. If you have a series of them, then you're going to have the ones coming in, probably going to the top one, and then the ones going to the second, second one in the series, going on the bottom one, and linking to the top on the next one. The green is for your ground. Now, sometimes these colors might be different, so that's why it's important to read the back. Because I believe, I believe sometimes these are gold and this is silver. So just got to pay attention to that. Because it's important on this type of application. Now when you're looking at a switch for 120 volts, they're the same color. Your ground still goes here. So your this guy is going to go here. But on a switch, the idea of a switch is to go from your power source through the switch 
and to this guy here or some light like a fan or something a ceiling fan or ceiling light so in doing so your your hot goes here so it says on here on this particular one it actually reminds you 14 amp is the one that you want to use because it's 15 gauge and that's what 14 amp is and sometimes though they'll even tell you um, it also has the hole so you can just punch it right in or you can use the screws now this you have to use both so what you're going to do is you're going to have the black one hit this one and then you have to have another black one that goes from here to this or your light or your fan or whatever this white one then your neutral then gets tied together with the other neutral and then all your coppers get tied together as well sometimes you'll tie two coppers together and put one copper in here just because trying to put two of them on there is kind of difficult and then you just simply use twist ties something like not this type exactly but something similar to this called a twist tie that's your AC application now your DC application because these are 120 but now I'm going to make them DC 12 volts now 12 volts I'm going to probably use 10 or 12 gauge wire now you can't really see this but that wire is stranded AC wire is obviously not stranded it's really stiff it's solid reason being is is and see this is 12 gauge and this is 12 gauge and yet they're totally different the reason why this is stranded is because the way electricity runs through copper is this when you have a bunch of little bitty lines in there that will re a bunch of copper strands in there that will reduce the resistance so you'll have more resistance in this one than you will in this one that's why some of your household devices say they'll power on 110 because you actually have and this is why this says 125 sometimes in a house you'll have 120 or 125 volts going through to start out by the time it gets to this or your your appliance it's now down to 110 because of resistance the more connections you have the more resistance you have and the longer it travels the more resistance so in a DC application you want the stranded now on the stranded let's go with this one first so on the stranded how you're gonna wire this guy is a little bit different here your black is your hot your white is your called neutral and this is your ground you don't have a ground in the DC application because your ground is supposed to be off of your battery if you notice on your car battery there's a separate line that goes from your negative to the uh, negative to the uh, the chassis that grounds the battery so in a solar application or any other DC application you ground your battery and you also ground in the other devices um, your large devices like your inverter and controller and things like that your panels etc inside you don't have to ground your lights or your switch or your your sockets or or, or outlets or anything like that so now that I've got this stranded piece here I'm going to use one of these guys here oh which reminds me to strip this wire you're going to use one of these and then to bend this you just use a pair of pliers and you just bend it it's pretty self-explanatory but you're going to use this here to strip your wires I'm not going to strip this one but you're going to strip your wire and then what you you have you know about say or so stripped then you're going to take this is what I've been doing there's obviously probably different ways of doing it you're going to take what I what I call is a fork and on this fork this fork is designed for 12 gauge it says it says a 12 this is right here 
12 to 10 gauge wire. This other here is the size of that hole. So it will fit an 8 to 10 stud, a stud being one of these here. So I'll put that in there and then I'll crimp it with this tool here. Up here is the crimping part. Now you can solder it and you can use heat shrink. In most cases I didn't. So once you've got this guy on there, then once you get that guy on there, then what you're going to do is then you're going to apply it to here. Now, here's where you got to look at it. The black here is your hot, right? Your red your positive. We're going to pretend the red is the hot because that's your positive. So that's going to go on the hot side. Now your black, your black is considered your negative or your and your ground. It's kind of one and the same. That's why you ground your negative battery. So on your black, you're going to put that not here, but here. This is going to be ignored because you've already grounded things, so you don't need to ground anything else. There is no following ground line. The following ground line is this. So that's going to go where your white would. And you're going to do the exact same thing. Plug that guy in there. If you need to hook series, you do the exact same thing as you would there. Now, when I'll show you what I did with one of these in a second, but when I want to set these up on my wall, I put it upside down. Most of the time they will be sitting like say. I put mine upside down and then on the casing I rolled it's 12 volts. The reason why I did it upside down was to help remind me, hey something's different about this, this outlet. Okay, So now you know how to wire this guy in 12 volts. That just saves you a bunch of money because you're going to also be able to hook up your lamp that you bought down at a uh, yard sale or at Walmart for a smoking price with a 12 volt um, uh, LED bulb and you're going to plug it in there. Now on this guy, this guy gets wired the exact same way as the AC. No difference with the exception that the ground is not used. So the AC, like I said, the ground goes here, the hot or what would be positive for the DC outlet or the DC application goes here and then the whites connect because they're neutral. Here we're going to take these guys, do the exact same thing, hook, hook them, put that connector on and then we'll put that connector right in there. Because the reds are hot, the reds are positive. Then we're going to take and do the same thing on the other side and and complete that that connection from this to either a light, a fan, an outlet, whatever it is you're going to go to. And then your your black, that negative is just going to tie together, so it's just going to continuously go to wherever it needs to go. So, which would be your lights or this guy or wherever. So, um, that's about it. Um, really, to put all this stuff together, you kind of just need a crimper and stripper, maybe some pliers, um, some connectors, um, maybe some wire cutters. Now, these wire cutters are to cut some bigger wire like six gauge or in and, and, and four gauge this is so wonderful I recommend getting a bigger wire cutter and then obviously screwdrivers so that you can mount this on your uh, electrical box um, like this thing and all that stuff so all right so let me go ahead and show you what I did in my applications I'll show you this in use I'll show you this one in use and how it's working with a regular lamp 
Alright, so far the video's been a little bit long and I apologize for that. We're going to put this into two parts. So this concludes this part of it. And so the second part's going to take over from everything being installed on the 12 volts and then, and then you see the switch and the outlets and the lamp and all that. So be sure to catch both videos. The next one will be up the following day. Thank you for watching my video today, and I appreciate you watching it all the way through there. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Every little bit helps support my channel. My name is Jeff, and you've been watching Arizona Hot Homestead.